One, let's go! I gave him a knife and it didn't even have a blade in it. Burying himself in gravel. Getting into your work right there. Me. Good morning, everybody. Chris at Team Aquascape here. So I bet you guys are asking, Chris, why the heck are you out here parked in some alleyway? Well, that's because we are on the North Shore of Chicago today. This is our access, is down this alleyway. We've got a very, very large condo building next door. Where we're working at is a single family home. Check this out, it's gonna be really, really awesome. So as you guys can see behind me, we've got the Moffins dropping off uh, the cobbles for our wetland filter. This is our main access point. What we did was we had to take a couple panels off of the fence in order to get our machines through as well as hit Moffin. We've got all the material for the wetland filter unloaded as far as the rock and gravel goes. So this is our main access point. We've got a very, very large mature oak tree here. So what we did is a low grade shredded mulch, about a four inch thick layer down over that. And then we've got our plywood so that we don't destroy the root mass of this oak tree as I run our equipment in and out of here. Going further back into the property, right here is where majority of that pond is going. This used to be a 5,000 gallon oil tank, I'm told, that was recently taken out by the local landscaper. That's where all the spoils and stuff came from. The thing was buried. It'll be very, very wide access on both sides. That's about as far over as we're going with it. It'll be about a 30 something foot pond that will end somewhere back in there. Really, really, really cool property. I love the side yard, shaded. So this is the existing pond. Total homeowner special, nothing wrong with that. She absolutely loves, loves, loves her fish. So we're gonna take extra special care of them, but we're also gonna be pimping out their new home, an enormous wetland filter, which will actually sit in this area here. Biofalls is gonna sit right there, dump into the wetland filter, which will actually be kind of a deep stream all the way through here, and then that pond starts right about there. This wetland filter area, stream area, will actually look like an extension of the pond that's only about four to six inches depth of water. This Japanese maple comes out. Here's our easement line right here, our setback lines. We'll probably only have about two to three feet on the back side of the biofalls on the respective sides. Normally, we'd love to be able to taper that dirt out a heck of a lot more and create a real nice natural setting for that waterfall to start out of. Unfortunately, site conditions won't allow us to do that. So cypress stays, that's jet maple's gone, catsura tree, all that good stuff is staying. Some beautiful understory trees kind of through here. You can see the shade line. I love the arching habit of these trees. On this project, it's gonna be a little bit unique. If soil conditions allow, we're only gonna rock in the top edge, which was a request of the customer. She really likes that liner bottom look. And that's cool to each his own. Um, normally I would like to rock the whole thing because it's very, very sandy soil. You can see the stuff just crumbles in your hand. We're right next to the lake. If structurally we won't be able to make it work, we may have to rock this whole thing in. Who do we have here? We've got our guest of the week. Why don't you tell uh, the Team Aquascape viewers out there who you are, Brian, and then tell us a little bit about your company too. Well, thank you, Chris. Well, one, during Pondemonium back in August, I talked to Brian Helfrich, the head of construction. He was seeking some help for some bigger projects. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I have my crew back home. Uh, we're a full landscaping company and we done ponds for 12 years now. So I just wanted to learn a little more from the best of our game a little bit and get in some work and work around some of the great artists of the world like Chris Hansen. So it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs> well, I don't know who he's talking about great artists around here, but um, I appreciate that. I'm super excited to have him because I'm excited to learn from him as well. Um, but we also need the manpower. So if any of you guys are out there are in the Charlotte area looking for an incredible landscape contractor, one that also specializes in water features, look this guy up, okay? We'll put his info in the link down below, so feel free to give him a shout, all right? And he loves Iron Maiden yeah, and all things it. metal, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> we rock. <laughs> Okay, so here's where we're at. Everything's demoed as far as the old pond goes. Holy cow, it might be our lucky day. Not only do we have one Brian here, we have two Brian's here. Oh man, we're on Brian overload here. We got Brian Humphreys, we got Brian Hoagland, we got Brian. No, we got Eli. <laughs> Enough jacking around here, guys uh, and girls out there. The next step in the process is getting this biofalls located, set, get the plumbing done so that we have a place to deposit our dirt which will be created from excavating out for our wetland filter, which is gonna go in this area right in through here. Again, that's gonna be a part of the stream, okay? 
So that'll be below water level. So in order to not do double work, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the two inch plumbing, run it this way. And as we're throwing this dirt, we're gonna throw it back around that biofall. Let's get that thing nice and set. Things are definitely coming along. You can see the guys are working out in the back. Um, give you perspective on how big this project's actually gonna be. The bog filter's over there. The pond's ending right about where I'm at. So a pretty big pond. It's about 36 feet in length. The main reason we're putting a big wetland on like this is because there's no way a biofalls, two biofalls, or even three biofalls would have the same amount of filtration as the same size wetland. So we're getting this big wetland bog filter in right now it'll actually be equivalent to maybe about 10 biofalls with a whole lot less maintenance. And I'll show you a close up exactly what I'm talking about. Everything excavated down, we're about three feet deep. And then we go down about another 16 inches deep for the centipede. So you can see we've got this flat wall that comes down like this, and then notched out for the centipede. We do that for the proper flow. Mitro and Brian are over here hooking up the plumbing. Plumbing's gonna come in here, go into that piece right there, through the centipede and the bottom of the centipede there's this little trough the whole idea of that trough is to allow solids and stuff to settle out before they move up into the aqua blocks so we've got this in our lowest area so when we want to clean it everything will move down through there we can pop that cap off put a pump down in there and then pump out that sludgy stuff once a year chris right now is just kind of locking in around the snorkel vault here you can see our clean out area is like right in the center of this system the reason we did that is because right here is about where that bridge is going to be so i needed to access that over in here didn't want to have to climb underneath the bridge every time we cleaned it out and we could have easily added more centipedes but we didn't need it with all the aqua blocks going in what doesn't settle out inside the centipede will then come up into a layer of aqua blocks settle out in there before it moves up into the rock and gravel we've got a lot more of these cobbles that then come over the top of the aqua blocks and then a layer of gravel over the top of that. Chris is gonna start putting in the first second of aqua blocks as soon as our plumbing crew finishes up over here. <laughs> Right now what we have is we have that bottom layer of cobbles down along the top of the aqua blocks. Now what we're doing, putting in that second layer of substrate. You know that one to two inch gravel. Brian's got a super sack of gravel. That's about a ton and a half of that, that bog gravel. So this is the stone uh, that's gonna go over top of those cobbles. So now we're just trying to use the machine, get it over there and then we'll cut the bottom out and hopefully it'll just shoot right out of there. I gave him a knife and it didn't even have a blade in it. He's doing pretty good. I mean, look at that. Burying himself in gravel. Getting into your work right there. Yeah! yeah! Started day two and guess what? By that beeping sound, I'm judging that the rocks are here. Nice, looks like we've got about five tons. Five tons, right? It's a beautiful field stone. Hello. <laughs> about got me. He about got me. Uh, Matt and I and then Juan and Brian are continuing to rock this waterfall area. So Matt, what are you looking for when you're putting in these retaining stones outside of the, the waterfall? Well, not only are we trying to hold the dirt back, but we want to create little pockets so that we can put landscaping and plants, kind of bring the whole thing together. So we, we create little pockets of dirt and soil in between the rocks so that we can do that. And it also helps break up all the stone that we're also putting in. Like we don't want it to look like a mountainside, right. right? Where it's just barren rock and gravel. We want the terrestrial plants and the perennials and the shrubs and that kind of stuff, exactly. right? To soften yep. things up. So you can see kind of what he's doing here. We've got rock, 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 but then we won't put a rock directly behind this one. I think what he's doing, because you can see the dirt's terraced at the same level as that rock. I think we'll probably end up putting one, what, back over there? Yeah, back here. Yep. Guys, remember, it's super important to leave room for plants. I know I talk about it every episode. Plants are obviously a very, very important element to making this thing look natural. So this is the rest of load number two in through here, so probably another dozen rocks or so. We've got the first four tons in. Now we're just working on all this stuff. So we'll be done with this pile. Hopefully, before we're done with this pile, the next load will show up so we have uh, enough to choose from. So, bada bing! <laughs> Yo, 
Yo, it's day three today. The way we're starting the day is we're gonna do a seam here. So we're gonna seam the pond liner to the wetland filter and waterfall liner, which is what we're doing now. So Juan's over here putting some Firestone primer on. You can see he does the really great wax on, wax off technique. That's the way I teach our guys to do it. I just think you get a nice even dispersal and you're able to wipe out a lot of those kind of gooey spots. So you don't have it too heavy in certain areas and it's very easy to pull back and forth across the areas that uh, need primer and that have been primed. So super important that this is clean and dry. So we went through and we wiped off the liner with a wet piece of fabric, came through with a dry piece of fabric and then actually used a heat gun to dry it the rest of the way. So we're only gonna do about eight feet at a time here, but we've got a two by 10 underneath this liner here just to keep it nice and flat and straight. So that'll also act as a guide. So we're gonna start down there and we're gonna work all the way this way, this way, this way, this way. We are gonna bring in the second piece of liner, which is a 25 by 50 that will cover this whole pond. So this shelf right here that I'm standing on is 12 inches below water. We are only rocking in the top shelf of this pond. We are going down to three foot depth. Oh, here the guys are. Yeah, muscles. So right now what Juan and Brian are doing is they are laying down the seam tape, which is the double-sided tape, three inch stuff. That's what's going to bond the two pieces of liner together. Then we're gonna prime and put a piece of cover tape over the two pieces at the seam where they come together. So we're gonna stop there because we're running out of primed area. We're gonna move that two by 10 over this way so we can keep going all the way up that way. So the guys have finished putting the double-sided tape on, the seam tape between the liners. They've got the two liners attached. Now what they're doing is they're coming over here with this six inch single-sided tape and that's our cover tape and that just goes right over the top of the seam. Then once this is done, then we'll fold this liner back and start digging our deep section. We can only dig back about 12 feet, so about to right here. We'll start putting these rocks in and then we'll just keep flipping that liner back and forth over. One little tip or trick guys too, so here's our double-sided tape. So right here, it looks like it's a perforated line going right down the middle of the cover tape. We use that a lot as a guide to help guide us through to make sure that we're going right over the top of the seam and we have an even amount of cover tape on either the left or right side of that seam. So that seam is actually going right down the middle of this cover tape. Work out any air bubbles and also just start working these edges back down making sure that there's a nice tight bond between the cover tape and the prime part of the liner here. So the guys are doing a great job. Looks like we're almost finished. When we excavate this out, our three feet, that liner is gonna get sucked down into the pond, over and then back up. So it looks like we have a ton of liner going out this way and out that way, but what'll happen is it ends up shrinking down. So we're gonna lose a lot of this. So we wanna make sure that we get everything attached and we're not going back later trying to piece two pieces of liner together in case it was short over there or on this side over here. I hope that helps a lot of you guys out. I know seaming is a little bit of an intimidating part of a project when you're uh, building ponds, but those are just some of the helpful tips that I received when I was starting. Great news, folks. Our seam is done, which is a huge step. So right now what we did is we folded back that liner back onto our wetland behind me. And now we have all this cleaned out. So this whole section in through there will be three feet, two feet, and then everything else will be a foot of water along this edge. We're gonna rock this whole edge. You can see I've got it bumped out a little bit farther from that back edge. This is to put in some of those big, big character boulders like that one on some of these peninsulas just to give this pond an excellent shape. Dig, dig, dig. We're gonna put this dirt over here. There's a, It's a little low there, so I'm gonna make sure I wanna stockpile some of it so that we can grade it out. We got all of our rock to choose from over there. I can only dig back about 10 feet this way towards us in order to still maintain my amount of reach on the excavator. So, wish us luck, we're digging, digging, digging. Let's see, we've been at this for about an hour. Our time, YouTube time, about 17 seconds. We're about a third of the way through the pond, back where the blade of the machine is, basically where the pond is gonna stop, so it's just gonna be a big raceway. Juan's putting some underlayment down to protect the liner from that big rock there. Now, this is all sand, not too terribly worried about it. Guys and girls, this is cheap, cheap, cheap insurance. The reason that we are putting a big rock down here is this whole edge had a ton, I mean, a ton of roots from this tree. This tree will totally be okay. We're gonna put this big rock in 
right here in order to stabilize this shelf and then we're gonna rock on top of it to continue our shape for our pond. This three inch line is going to be used for our circulation jets as well as feeding our wetland filter. All that plumbing will stay inside the liner. Rock, 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 rock. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. One, let's go! So hard to find good help these days. This is gonna be the one rock we're gonna let Brian place today. Oh boy, here we go. Again, if you're in the greater Charlotte area, Hoaglandscape. <laughs>